Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to make an investment case for putting all your property eggs in one basket. And I know it sounds counterintuitive because generally it's an accepted sound principle that diversification actually reduces your risk smooths returns and potentially improves your returns in the long run. And the common vernacular, of course, is spreading your eggs amongst various baskets. And uh, most of the time, I would agree with this principle. But the one caveat I would add is so long as it doesn't deteriorate investment asset quality. And that's absolutely key. That means sometimes property investors should not diversify. And that's because the quality of your investments will determine your future returns. That is, you can't expect to generate above average quality returns if you invest in average quality property. It's just not going to happen. Therefore, you must invest in the highest quality asset that your budget allows. And if that means that you're going to put your eggs in one basket, but that basket is very high quality, then in the long run, you're going to do okay. And most importantly, what I want to sort of get across in this episode is that uh, the dollar value appreciation of your assets is an important metric to consider. Of course, uh, percentage returns are good, particularly for comparing different investment assets, uh, either asset classes or actual assets, that is properties. Uh, But dollar value is uh, incredibly important to consider. Of course, while we can't use capital growth to fund retirement, uh, of course, not until we sell the property, it still is an important consideration. Uh, Let's take the example where you've got a million dollars in super, you're about to retire, and you spend $100,000 a year. Now, ignoring any investment returns just for simplicity, that a million dollars is going to last you 10 years. However, if at the same time you've got an investment property portfolio that's appreciating by $200,000 a year, you're actually in a relatively strong position and you're probably not going to worry about running out of money in 10 years' time because your asset base is still increasing at a total level. Now, it's most important then to look at um, what have uh, what has property returned in dollar terms uh, historically. So if we go back 30 years to 1991, uh, the median house price increased by around about $10,000 a year, which is equivalent to $20,000 in today's dollars. Now, if you're spending $100,000 a year, that $20,000 value appreciation is kind of equivalent to two and a half months. So to be in the same example as the the, the same position as the example I just gave you, you're going to need to own 10 properties, you know, to offset the impact of your spending. Now, if we look at the average median price, uh, house price between Melbourne and Sydney, it's about a million dollars today. If we assume that's going to increase by 6%, let's be conservative, uh, that's a $60,000 per year increase in today's dollars in real terms over the long run. Of course, it's not going to happen every year, but if we sort of smooth out returns over a longer period... So that's kind of equivalent to seven months worth of living expenses. And that's the key. Two, uh, sorry, 30 years ago, uh, property, the average property was increasing, medium property was increasing uh, at a rate of around about two and a half months of living expenses. Today, because assets are so much more expensive, they're increasing seven months by seven months of living expenses. And in the not too distant future, they're going to be increasing at a rate of $100,000 and then potentially $200,000 a year in today's dollars. So I have a chart in the, the link is in the show notes and of course on the blog on the website. And what I did is I looked at the uh, change in uh, medium price value discounted back in today's dollars. Uh, so taking account of inflation between 91 and 2021. So now the last 30 years And then what I did is assume that the median house price grows at 6.5% per annum and the inflation rate is going to be 1.5%, so 5% kind of real growth for the next 30 years. And what it suggests is that in today's dollars, by 2030, 2033, sort of around that time, 
Uh, the median uh, property value is increasing by 100000 And by 2045, the median property price uh, could be appreciating by $200,000 in today's dollars, which is two years worth of living expenses. So what does all that mean? Well, the key outcome could be that if you're, say, 15 to 20 years away from retirement, that investing in one investment-grade property could do all this heavy lifting to sort of fund or help you fund uh, retirement. You might not need to invest in several properties. And so if you're going to invest in one property, why not make it the highest quality property that you can afford? And as I've talked about in many episodes, quality trumps quantity every day of the week. I would rather uh, uh, own one uh, fantastic quality asset for one and a half million dollars than three average quality assets for half a million dollars each. And sometimes I meet investors that are kind of obsessed with um, acquiring a multi-property investment portfolio, which is a good aim to have. But let's make sure what we're aiming for is actually meaningful. And they express their goal in terms of number of properties, mainly probably because they've worked out, you know, just um, uh, roughly that's how many they need. But really what we should be thinking about, in my opinion, is how much do you want to invest in the market? Uh, and then what return do you want? And then let's um, not necessarily uh, have any preconceived ideas of how many properties that is. Because if we put it into one property, but it is the best property you can afford, uh, chances are uh, high quality assets produce high quality returns. And I wrote a blog uh, a few weeks ago, did a podcast on it, looking at the last sort of three or four decades in Australia. And my hypothesis was that it it was almost a rising tide, that really if you bought a a property in the 1970s or 80s, uh, almost anywhere in Australia, you've probably done pretty well. Uh, And I suggested in that blog that there's a handful of very unique factors that kind of contributed to this rising tide and that I didn't think uh, all of those factors would persist over the next three or four decades. And so our starting assumption as investors maybe should be uh, that it's not going to be a rising tide, and therefore asset selection, the type of property and the location of the property that we're investing in, uh, might dictate the returns, the investment returns that we will receive to a much greater extent than what it has done over the last 20 or 30 years. So certainly check out that blog. But this um, podcast is kind of um, borrowing off or extending off that theme that, uh, you know, the dollar value appreciation in uh, of property price growth in, in a, any particular asset is really important to measure. And that's what you're really chasing because if you've got a property portfolio that's increasing by amount, twice as much as what you're spending, mathematically, you know, one day you're going to have to sell that asset, but mathematically you're, you're never going to run out of money. Um, so how do you put all your eggs in one basket, but do it safely? So my first um, uh, bit of counsel, I guess, is to uh, really test your preconceived notion of how much an investment grade property costs. You know, how much is it sensible to invest in one particular asset? So, you know, some people might say, look, I couldn't imagine spending more than $800,000 on an investment property. And to other people, a good quality property might cost them one and a half to two million dollars. And putting aside, you know, financial position, because of course you must consider what is prudent for your financial position, but putting that aside... You know, I think it's worthwhile sort of testing any preconceived notions and sort of pushing your comfort levels to some degree, um, because arguably, if you can get your head around it and it's financially prudent to do, um, arguably spending a little bit more and getting a high quality asset will actually in the long run reduce your investment risk because you're you're betting against a, a sort of sure thing. The next thing I would encourage you to think about is getting some advice. So that is... Uh, engaging the services of a professional, honest and and very experienced buyer's agent. You know, the difference between, say, 1% growth over a 20-year period is uh, over half a million dollars in additional equity. So the key question is, do you want to pay, say, $20,000 in fees to make half a million dollars? Uh, Well, you've got to wait 
20 years to, to make that money, but any um, incremental increase in the average growth rate over a long period of time uh, ends up being a significant amount. Uh, and you really, uh, there's not much you can do to a property after you've bought it. You know, we, we, the decision you make to buy a particular property in a particular location, you can't change that after the fact. Uh, so you better get that initial decision correct. So getting some independent strategic advice, I think, makes sense. Uh, if you have more than $2 million to invest, well, at that point, it could be wise to st- uh, spread your money across uh, two or more assets. Uh, but if you've got less than $2 million, uh, I would uh, encourage you to start thinking about putting all your eggs in one basket for the reasons that I just uh, set out. And finally, one thing you're going to need to think about if you do put all your eggs in one property basket is capital gains tax. Uh, because it's quite possible that what you could do is say to yourself, well, I've got super, that might fund the first 10 to 15 years of retirement. I'm going to go and buy a property today, and then I'm going to sell it 10 to 15 years after I've retired uh, when my super balance is getting low. And that might mean that you've got a time horizon, say uh, an expected holding period of maybe 30 years, for example. Well, if you buy a really good quality asset today in 30 years, you're going to have a significant amount of equity. But also that means you're going to have likely a significant capital gains tax liability as well. So uh, one of the downsides, I guess, to investing in a high growth asset and holding it for long term is capital gains tax. So it might be something you want to um, uh, think about uh, pretty closely in terms of ownership structure and and how you might uh, go about minimising that tax. Of course, that's going to be different for everyone, uh, depending on their financial position and what their investment strategy looks like. But if your investment strategy um, is premised on the idea of selling a property down the track, something to think about. Now, of course, uh, the strategy of putting all your eggs in one basket isn't without risk. Uh, In fact, everything kind of has risk. But, you know, there are some benefits with um, spreading your money across various assets, various property assets. Uh, The first one is um, tenant diversification. You know, if I've got two or three properties, I've got two or three tenants. If I lose one tenant, I don't lose all my investment income. Uh, Whereas if I've only got one property, I lose the tenant. Then it's up to my personal financial position to meet all the holding costs. Uh, Now, I'd argue that if you've got a very, very high quality property, Uh, the chance of prolonged vacancy is uh, greatly reduced, uh, but still, nonetheless, uh, you know, you've got one tenant, it is a higher risk. Um, The other risk is uh, distribution of returns. Uh, I've got a link to a blog in the show notes I wrote a couple of years ago that highlights that property tends to go through cycles. Uh, Typically, it's a a 7 to 10 year period of very low growth or no growth, followed by a period of 7 to 10 years of uh, high growth that ultimately produces around 8% capital growth over the long run. So there's going to be periods of time where property just moves sideways. And if you put all your eggs in one basket, then there's going to be a period of time uh, that that your overall wealth moves sideways as as well, so it doesn't appreciate. Whereas if you diversify geographically, um, what you can do is uh, so spread that risk a little bit. Uh, some properties will move sideways. Some p- properties will be appreciating at the same time. And a portfolio level kind of smooths out those returns. Uh, from a practical perspective, not a big deal. It's more of a, a risk profile thing. Um, it, property is a long-term investment. Uh, and so as long as we're willing to uh, have the patience and ride out those uh, different cycles, it's not that big a deal. Uh, One of the benefits of investing, finally, of in multiple properties is it does give you a lot more flexibility. So, for example, someone might uh, think, oh, well, I'll go and buy three investment properties uh, with the idea of selling one in 20 years to reduce debt uh, to a significant enough level so that the properties pay for themselves and then just keep those two properties for the the longer term. Uh, Obviously, if you've got multiple assets, you've then got multiple assets exit strategies or debt repayment strategies and that's not true if you uh, put all your eggs in one basket so it's not without risk and you obviously should get some uh, independent financial advice in respect to it but just something to really think about 
because it's the dollar value appreciation ultimately that's going to um, go towards paying for living expenses rather than the percentage return. So in summary, really what I wanted to do is articulate kind of two main points with respect to this podcast. The first one is that investment grade houses in most capital cities cost close to or over a million dollars these days. Whereas 30 years ago, the cost was significantly less. So the dollar value appreciation uh, on those properties, if we're holding the the, uh, percentage rate the same, is significantly different. And arguably then, you need fewer actual investment property assets in order to uh, build a a portfolio that's going to help you fund retirement. The second point I wanted to make is that if you're going to obsess about any one factor as an investor, a property investor that is, please obsess about quality. Quality is the most important factor. Leveling up on quality will typically get you a higher return and also invest, reduce your investment risk. Think about it like buying a pink diamond. You know, diamonds are incredibly rare. The value appreciates over time, but a pink diamond is even rarer. It's going to outperform white diamonds because of its scarcity. So when you're investing, you really want to be investing in the pink diamond. If you want above average returns, you must invest in above average property. Okay, so that's it for me this week. Of course, uh, a constant reminder to please leave a rating uh, wherever you you listen to your podcasts. Uh, It certainly helps uh, the distribution of the podcast and gets more listeners. Uh, So uh, if I can ask you for one thing, if you've enjoyed it, uh, please do that. And until next week, bye for now.